Hello everybody and welcome to the final session of Fridius in the Rage. I hope you guys are doing well. I'm doing pretty good, some ups and downs, you know, but I guess that's normal. But generally speaking, I'm pretty well. And yeah, so this is one is the last video for this course and I hope you all enjoyed it, the other ones as well. So um, this video will be a little bit shorter than the other ones just because mainly the fifth session, the final session of the course at college, it's about uh, the students really and them sharing uh, what they've learned, what they've liked, you know, any light bulb moments there or if there is anything that they wish um, they need to be kind of recapped, all right? But I feel it's not worth it to do like a full recap of the course, to be honest, or if I was to pick just some things that I wanted to recap just random, uh, because I mean, you got the videos, you know what I mean? So if you do want to um, go through something again, you can just watch it again. It's as simple as that. And I will still get like notifications for comments at all. So if you do have questions, you know, anything you want me to explain to you, I can easily answer the comments. All right, so we're just gonna start. As usually, we will do a recap of the last session. So session four, we're just going to go through what we did. So if you remember, we went through quite a few skills last uh, time, I would say. So first one would be the odd cross band, if you remember. So it's basically show us how in any situation, so that would be the situation there, you can find yourself in some situations and then everything between like there's thoughts, uh, physical feelings, I have, don't know how to spell that, physical uh, feelings there, sorry, uh, yeah, thoughts, feelings, physicals and behavior as well. So how finding yourself in any situation could lead to kind of these four things happening and you kind of, using the odd cross bar, you kind of learn how all of these kind of interconnected. So we did use the example um, of, let's say I go for, see my friend for coffee, and she's late, all right, so that would be the situation, and then my thought would be, why is she late, maybe she doesn't want to see me, all right, and then that will lead to a certain feeling, so I would start to feel maybe anxious, you know, I would start to feel like I'm worthless, for example, and then the physical sensation example, that would be, I don't know, start to sweat a little bit, you know, a little bit of palpitation, and then the behavior, I could either go myself, I would keep texting my friend and asking why is she not coming, and so on and so on. So really, if you do find, especially if you find yourself in a recurrent situation, you can use the odd cross band, and maybe you can start and kind of learn a little bit from there, and you can start to kind of change a little bit some of these things, you know, and yeah, just kind of learn from it. And um, yeah, remember, it can start from anything, so it doesn't need to necessarily start from a thought, yeah, it can start from the behavior or from the feelings, for example. And then we saw how the hot cross band can be related to the hot thought. So going back to our own example, in that situation of my friend being late uh, for coffee, my thought was, she doesn't like me. Now, this is something that you should do a little bit later on, so not maybe on the day the situation happened, maybe a week later, you know, when you can be a little bit more rational, checking the facts a little bit better, and then try and strip that thought, you know, that initial thought, which was, she doesn't like me. Try and strip that back, you know, that requires a lot of honesty and kind of difficult at the beginning as well. Uh, but yeah, you strip that thought back and maybe you will find yourself finding a hot thought, which is usually linked to our core beliefs as well. So maybe in that case, the thought in general will be, the hot thought, sorry, will be, not only my friend doesn't like me, nobody can like me because I'm a terrible person. Yeah, so that's a good exercise as well for you guys. If you ever find yourself in the hot cross bar, then take some time afterwards just to try and strip back the talk that was there and try to find your hot toad, all right? Then, um, oh yeah, just uh, about, um, we mentioned about when we were talking about the hot cross bar, we mentioned the court of law as well, which is kind of a, a pro and con exercise. So in this case, we will put in the court of law the thought that um, my friend is late because she doesn't like me. And then you will use your uh, court of law 
with uh, finding things that are for that thought, so why the, the friend doesn't like you, and things that are against that thought, all right? But the important things about the court of law is to check the facts, all right? You can't put feelings on there, you can't put assumptions on there, just the facts. So it's a really, really good skill that you can use pretty much for anything, to be fair. Um, then we went through primary and secondary emotions and we just gave the definition of primary and secondary emotion. So uh, primary emotion will be that emotion that you um, sometimes don't really want to feel. And then you will go, instead of feeling that primary emotion, which is the real one, you will go and feel a secondary emotion. And we did the example of anger which anger is sometimes can be the secondary emotion so i feel angry for some reason you know and i go there because anger i mean it's kind of an easy emotion to feel you know you remember also the positive things that we did on the first session about anger as well so feel, by feeling the anger i make myself not feel the real thing which could be sadness for example frustration, you know, disappointment, yeah, things like that. So remember, the secondary emotion is the one kind of that we go to and it's easier to deal with and the primary emotion is the one that we kind of struggle to kind of admit that we are actually feeling that, all right? And remember, um, I did show you the wheel of emotion as well last week, which again, I think you can pretty find pretty, on, pretty easy online and again i do have plenty at college so whenever i see you again you can ask me for one and the wheel of emotions will help you actually with that you know because there is loads of very detailed kind of emotions in there under the big umbrella of sadness for example that is another about 20 emotions so when you are kind of want to learn a little bit about yourself more you want to be like kind of truthful and deal with things you know you can use that wheel of emotion to figure it out which one is your secondary emotion that you're using and which one is what you're actually feeling all right and then we went through just have a quick talk about uh, the difference between thought and feelings i'm just going to give you the very easy answer there and if you want a more detailed answer please watch the previous video uh, so basically thought is just words thought is word yeah words and feeling is sensation it is as simple as that because we do and i do get them mixed up all the time all right and then the last one was another skill and it was an anger thermometer so the anger thermometer is a really really good um skill that can help us to um figure out when our anger is justified so if you remember you know what you do i don't know if you can see here what you do with your thermometer so you will put you know you just write down what makes you hungry a one what makes you hungry a two a three da, 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 all the way up to ten what makes you furious right so one two four let's say it's kind of mild you know annoyance more than anything and then four until seven eight that's anger and then eight until ten and that will be probably furious all right then once you've done that we did for example i'll do my example again about my eyebrows once again so my eyebrows if my eyebrows don't come okay in the morning when i do them on they don't come nice you know I get angry one out of ten. Yeah, it's usually one out of ten. I get annoyed, you know, I like, uh, 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 and then I'll be all right. But let's say tomorrow I wake up and my eyebrows don't come all right, and I get angry ten out of uh, ten out of ten. So that should make me think: Is that anger justified? It's not. So why, you know, at that point you can start to kind of dig deep a little bit and figure out why, in that case something so silly that usually is a 1 out of 10 is making me 10 out of 10 must be something else going on yeah so it's all about again this course as i said it's a lot about like kind of discovering a little bit more about yourself and learning a little bit about yourself and sometimes can be a little bit uncomfortable especially when you are used when you're used to deal with things in a specific way you know and then you're like oh well maybe i should do something else instead and there you go so yeah i did mention about the video last week about this is water i don't know if you guys have seen it yet but once again if you don't have the link i don't have the link you just type in this is water fishbowl because the fishbowl edition is like kind of fishbowl version so it's like shorter 
and kind of fun, you know. Otherwise, you can find just him talking and talking about this thing. And just check it out because it does help to put things in uh, context a little bit as well. All right. So, oh, hold on, before I get the, hello, before I get the other flip chart, um, so now what we're going to do, and that's pretty much it after that, I'm going to give you two new skills, all right, and I kind of, they're kind of one of my favorites, especially the last one, and then we're done, all right? So, I'm going to get the first one, in which there's another of my amazing, yeah, beautiful drawings there, and... This one it's called the stress bucket. I'm just gonna get my nose. If I have it somewhere. Yeah, there we go. So the stress bucket, alright? So just imagine that every day when you wake up, you go around the new day and you're carrying a bucket with you, alright? And every time something happens that is stressful, this bucket fills up, alright? So Let's say, for example, I wake up tomorrow morning, right? And you can already wake up with something, with some water, some stress in it. Example, these times, you know, we are all pretty much stressed every day. You know, you wake up and we're in lockdown, you know, you put on the news and people are dying, you know, we are, we are far from our loved one, you know, it's really hard. So let's say tomorrow I wake up and my stress level is already here. Yeah, so I'll just put lockdown here, yeah? So I'm already starting with some stress, you know? And again, that's absolutely normal, all right? And then let's say I go about my day, you know, and then things will happen during the day and my stress level will go up. My eyebrows. My eyebrows will not come right, yeah? These freaking eyebrows. And that goes there, you know? And it goes a little bit more, hey? And then let's just say... I don't know, it's kind of hard when you're locked in the house, you know. Let's just say um, it's a beautiful day outside, you know, and I want to go out. So I go out and I see people not wearing the mask, you know, not uh, um, uh, doing social distancing, all right? So I put something else on, okay? So you see where I'm going there. Let's say I have, there is financial problems that could be in there, you know. Could be financial, I'm just going to do this, you know, especially these times, you know, with recessions are going to happen, you know, we don't know what's going to happen with the economy, yeah, so that it's kind of a big one. And then let's say relationships, you know, you're missing your family. I, my family is in Italy, you know, and that's a big stress for me. The fact that for me, the main one is that I, I don't know when I'm going to see them again. So it could be at the end of the year, maybe next year. Who knows? So that's kind of a big stress. So I'm just put here relationships, yeah? Relationships. So you see where I'm going there, yeah? So the, your stress bucket will fill up, yeah? Now, what happens if it does overflow, yeah? If you if it's getting too, too, too much, the bucket will overflow, you know? And you can't take it. So maybe if that happens, you go over your window of tolerance, you remember? You go over your window of tolerance and you'll freak out completely, you know, or maybe you'll get depressed, you know. So I, the idea is that the bucket is getting filled, but there are things that you can do that can help you empty the bucket. So I'm just going to, these are holes, yeah? I'm just going to put some holes here. And what can help you um, emptying the bucket is, for example, doing something like we're doing now, so learning. Yeah, learning new skills, you know, spending some time doing something that is kind of familiar, you know, so that could empty a little bit of water there, or doing some breathing exercises that perfect for stress, you know, put your like um, uh, your heart rate down a little bit, you know, and just chill out a little bit, listen to some calming music, and once again, this is coming up. Or doing some mindfulness, that's just, I was mentioning that, mindfulness is just amazing for stress. Or doing some exercises, you know, and this, we, we can do it in the house as well, you know, just any exercise, you know, just do some jumping jacks out of nowhere, you know what I mean? Just do 30 jumping jacks, there you go, your stress level will go down, alright? So, once again, this is 
kind of a really useful um, skill because you can picture in it, you know, next time you feel like your stress level are going up, are going up, are going up, think about this bucket, you know, and think about is that overflowing? Am I going to get over my window of tolerance, you know, or am I going to start to feel really, really upset or really, really depressed, you know? So try and do the things that you usually do just to make sure that you're empty that bucket again, all right? I'm just going to see if there is any more examples on my notes, but I think, oh yeah, a good one for, and this is kind of, kind of appropriate as well, would be like something I put stress in is lack of sleep. That could be one as well. Especially nowadays, you know, our sleep patterns are all over the place. And that's pretty much everyone around, you know. So that could richly, you know, there you go. You wake up in the morning, you only had a few hours sleep. You didn't sleep well. Your stress baggage is already going up. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, things that, that you know, it says in here just to, like, <clears throat> empty the bucket. You go rest and relaxation, uh, doing something you enjoy, eating healthy food. So that's, uh, that's a really, really good point as well, you know, just having a good diet <clears throat> and also treat yourself as well. That can help have some chocolate, a nice piece of dark chocolate, you know, 70% or something, less sugar. And it, it's going to make you kind of feel better there. And it's going to release some nice endorphins that what we want. All right. So stress packets, just again, if you want to uh, expand a little bit on this, just go online and there is plenty, plenty, plenty about this, but it's very easy. What comes in needs to get out. As simple as that. And now we're going to do the last one, guys. Oh, the last one. And again, I think this last one is probably my favorite. And it's more of a kind of a gen, it's not even kind of a skill. It's something, once again, to think about, you know, and it's kind of really general. It doesn't really relate to hunger in particular, I would say. But it relates mainly on our life you know, and what we've been through, you know, so, <clears throat> so, can you see, yeah, so this is called, um, banish, what is it, banish in the dark versus creating the light, all right, so let's start with, uh, banish in the dark, all right, so it's not a bad thing, first of all, and it's basically, you know, when you kind of, well, after you've been ill, you know, and you haven't feel you haven't felt really well, and you start your recovery, all right. So there is things that you do, all right, in order to kind of feel better and progress your recovery. Okay. So let's do an example straight away. And that example, I do my own. Um, let's talk about college. And let's say uh, when I I started college because my CPN advise me, advise me to do that, yeah, so let's say start college, yeah, so you see, now that's a great thing, yeah, it's not, this is not bad, absolutely, but you, you'll see how you can go from here to here, all right, so starting the college, yes, it's a great thing, but I kind of did it because, because my CPN told me, because it was the right thing to do, because it would help me with my recovery and it would help me to feel better, all right? So when, after, let's say, I started to get better a little bit, and that was time to college as well, obviously, what I did, I started, and that's true, I started to uh, volunteer at college. So I started to teach, you know, some courses and as a volunteer, and then uh, I applied for a job there, and now I'm working for college five hours a week, I think. So basically what I did when I started the college, it was, there you go, I was punishing the dark there. I was doing that for my recovery. You know, I didn't really do it because I wanted to. I did it because it was important for me to do it. Yeah. And yeah. So I started college because of my recovery. And then after a while, I started to uh, volunteering. I'm just going to spell volunteering. Yeah. So you see, what's, what's changed there is that what I'm doing now, volunteering, working, you know, being involved in different ways. It's not, it's not just being a student, you know. It's I'm creating the ego. I'm creating the light for myself and I'm creating the light for other people. 
as well. And really is as simple as that. If in Banish in the Dark you do things just because you have to, because you're recovering, in creating the light, you do things because you enjoy them. That's as simple as that, you know. And this could be something that you might think, oh, well, but that's obvious. That might be obvious to you. But sometimes when we are in, during our recovery, we get into that cycle that everything that we do is about the recovery. And we forget about ourselves a little bit. Another good example that I'll do. Um, so when I start, once again, it's my own example. I have no problem sharing that. I'm actually very proud of that. So um, when I started kind of, after I was ill, when I started my recovery, one of the main things that I had to do was starting to eat properly. Yeah. Starting to eat healthy. Yeah, as healthy as I can, but starting to eat, yeah, proper proper food, not just like takeaways, not just um, ready meals, not just pizza, you know, not just, I don't know, cereal bars all day, you know what I mean? Starting to proper nourish, n nourish, nourish myself, all right? So that would be banishing the dark, so start to eat properly, yeah? Because you know, guys, that what we eat has a big impact on our mental health as well, yeah? But that's for another time. But just to put it out there a little bit. So, yeah, so I started to eat probably, you know. And then, you know, what happened after a little bit? Well, after almost, I'll say, a year into kind of when I started my recovery, I started to cook, all right? And not just the usual, you know, I cooked before a little bit, a little bit of pasta, you know, things like that. I started to cook like nice, nice cakes, you know, and lasagna and all of that. And I absolutely adore it, you know. So I'm just going to put here cooking. So I found a passion for cooking. And there you go. In that case, I banished the dark by starting to eat properly, you know, to feed myself, to get the vitamins in, you know, get all the minerals that I need inside, eat, uh, drinking water as well, don't forget. So, yeah, banishing the dark with eating properly. And then after a while, I started to create in the light by creating these amazing meals, you know. And by being, like, happy, you know, not only by eating them, obviously, but by cooking them as well, you know. And by making other people happy, you know. If I make a cake, if I make a muffin, and I bring it to my friend, you know. That makes me so happy, and it makes her happy as well. So this could be a... Well, we could go on about like all day, to be honest about these. Another thing is the gym, for example, you know, you start to work out because you know that that's going to have a good effect on your mental health, but kind of heat. You can't really be bothered, you know, and then once you start to work out, you know, after a while, you kind of see the results, you know, in your physical, obviously, in your body, but you see your results in your mental health as well, and then you really, really start to enjoy going to the gym, you know, going to, I do Zumba, for example, I love doing Zumba, you know, and I started the gym, there you go, just because kind of, I had to start the gym, it was some, one of the things that was suggested to me, and I did, I was like, all right, I've never done the gym in my life, why not, and then after a while, there you go, you start to kind of just enjoy it, so please, please, don't forget, you know, how important is our recovery, you know, and how important it is to stay focused as well on our recovery, but it's also really important to remember about enjoying ourselves, you know, and there you go, just share the lights a little bit, so just, you know, in your own time, just think about your own examples there, and if you don't have anything about creating the light just yet, that is absolutely fine, you know, this does, these things doesn't happen overnight, you know, it takes a lot, a lot, it takes me a couple of years, you know, to get, to cook what I cook today, you know what I mean, but maybe if you don't find anything on this side, you know, and you move, you got most of the things on this side, which I repeat, it's not bad, this side is not bad, yeah, this is not bad and good, this is good, and this is better, <laughs> but um, this is like next step. But yeah, what you can do, you can start to think about, okay, um, what do I do? I, I don't know, let's say you guys have a little garden, yeah? And until now, you know, you're doing your gardening because of your recovery, because you have to, because it's important that the garden is tidy, you know, for your own mental health. Maybe you can start, I don't know, research online and get some new seeds, you know, and really plant things that you're gonna love or, plant some vegetables in there, I don't know, you know what I mean, just go, get your imagination, go wild, you know, and see if you can take it to the next step there.
because this will have your recovery as well the light is not only this side will have your recovery it will be this one as well all right and yeah guys i can talk about this all day but i won't do that it's still half an hour video so i guess i've done okay and that is it so i'm just i didn't write it here so i'm just gonna write thank you guys so yeah thank you marvelous Thank you so, 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 so very much for listening to me. And yeah, that's it. I'm going to get emotional. No, I'm not. Uh, I hope I'm going to see you all very, very soon. Hopefully in a few months, you know, we'll be able to reopen college. And if you guys want, you can take this course live. And it's the content will be pretty much the same. But um, obviously there is the interactivity part of it. That is kind of a big part as well. But once again, thank you so very much and I hope you have a fantastic day. Stay safe and yeah, do something about creating your life there. Do something that you really enjoy and that will make you feel absolutely better. So thank you very much guys and bye-bye.